Hello everyone, this is Painting in Different Worlds, or How to Paint a Movie Poster like Drew Struzan. I'm Larry Kitchen, and we're going to do this poster. This is in Different Worlds that I created for the documentary that's on Amazon. The writer of the piece um, you know, requested this particular style, and we had photos of the actors uh, shot in high res. And you can see on the right-hand side, I uh, had those images on on screen, and then through a grid drawing, I transferred a line drawing to the surface. You'll notice that uh, there's brown chalk. Um, I'm laying it out now. This is all sped up uh, quite fast because the portrait uh, takes quite a while. So I'll just talk as we work through this together. You'll notice that I'm plugging in those tones. Uh, this particular painting is in oil. It's on a gessoed surface on a masonite board. You notice the illustration of uh, John Gooding on the left. It's already completed and the background is, is blocked in. And the focus of this piece is the portrait of Micah Gooding, who is the narrator and the star of the piece. Now, in painting a portrait like you see, um, using the largest brush I felt comfortable with, and I'm mixing up uh, one small section at a time. When you paint a portrait like this, uh, you need to try to train your eye to look at a small area and then find that tone on your palette. In this case, uh, I was using a glass palette. And then I go through the block in stage. Now, my primary purpose in my style of painting is to drop in the color that, uh, that I see. If I have to isolate it, uh, sometimes I'll bring up a Photoshop and use the eyedropper tool and click on that color so I can see it independent of the photo and the colors that are around it. Uh, your mind will trick you sometimes uh, when you're trying to decide what color is actually there. At this point, I'm beginning just the first initial highlighting. And uh, again, in, in painting uh, works, it's good to think in terms of three different values, shadow, midtone, and highlight. So at this point, I'm, I'm uh, laying in some highlight of the nose, uh, working uh, on those high points that are catching uh, the light. You'll notice uh, the light is coming from the right-hand side of uh, of the, the person in this portrait, shadows are on the left. I try to keep uh, shadows as lively as I can by using color uh, in those areas. Rather than using black on the left hand side of the face mixed into the flesh tone, I've, I've tried to stay with burnt umber and, and uh, red uh, when at all possible. You know, every object that protrudes from the face, you know, has this three value system on it of a shadow, a midtone, and a highlight. So, really, if you can paint um, a sphere with those three values on it, then that sort of trains you to look for those shadows and highlights. And you'll notice, too, that I bounce around a good bit uh, in this piece. Uh, we have um, you know, with the fill brush moving, it's uh, obviously I move slower than, than you're looking at uh, this work right now. It's sped up four times. But to squeeze this into a 10 minute video, um, you know, we had to do that. Now, um, you'll notice that I'm sort of rimming the left hand side, pushing those values. You want to find the full range from darkest darks to lightest lights in your work if you want the piece to look realistic. So I'm kind of sneaking up on it uh, on the left hand side. Some people have asked me how can I stand not to to paint the eyes first. There are great artists out there that will start with the eyeball, render it up and then then go from there. Uh, you know quite frankly I don't know sometimes I might jump into the eye quicker but um, it's sort of the big finish. It's uh, what I want uh, you know, emotion, and, and it's what people look at first. So later on in this video, we'll do a zoom in on the eye. You can watch uh, the paint being plugged into that particular area. Sort of suggesting a little beard, and 
Uh, now we're moving on to the hair. Now this is important to get it in there because I don't want all of my painting adjustments uh, to be surrounded by that pure white of the gesso. So as soon as you can get the white knocked out, uh, the better. Uh, because you don't want any great dark surprises right at the very end of your painting because dark around uh, the flesh that you've locked in suddenly will make it look much lighter. And so as, uh, as you'll notice here, the flesh tone begins to look lighter because it's got the almost black tone uh, surrounding it. And that's quite a bit different from having pure white around it. So it's important to jump around a bit and get those done. Now here's your close up of the, of the right eye. And this is sort of real time painting. Uh, and you'll notice that, of course, I paint a lot slower when, when uh, we're looking at, at actual time here. I think um, a lot of young art students, you know, wonder about the eye and the mystery of that and how do you go about that. So you'll notice here on, on this piece that it's a, it's a slow and detailed process. I've actually seen uh, great portrait painters use the end of their finger with ink or paint on it and just daub one time for the initial block in of the, of the iris and pupil. Uh, that's one way. Sometimes I'll paint it like a raccoon and then work toward detail. This particular way, I'm taking my time with my hand on the mall stick and I'm just blocking in those colors. The initial block in will show uh, the brown of the eye with um, with the detail being built up. This is just blocking in uh, that, that brown, uh, working around the highlight that's there. And then I'll come back and drop in some mottled uh, tones of the eye. Uh, that iris, if you look close, has quite a few uh, little pieces to it. So the pupils in the center uh, in normal lighting, you know, it'll take up 50% or so. In harsh lighting, then it, it pulls down to a smaller black circle. Uh, in low light, it almost fills up the iris. You'll notice, uh, you know, with this brush, you know, something funny I hadn't realized at the time, it's got a big piece of red on it. I don't know how that got there, but it's on the ferrule of the paintbrush. I'm sure I wiped it off later, but uh, there it is. Okay, now it's clean. See, that's the magic of the digital era. So I'm laying in very carefully the, um, the lights and darks around the eye. Uh, this piece will be reproduced uh, a little bit smaller than this, but it's, it's important to get it uh, fairly decent looking because the reproduction of it is, is uh, fairly, fairly large, maybe um, you know, 80% of, of this painting. So there, there's quite a bit to say about how do you paint an eye. Uh, it, it is a sphere wrapped with a lid. And so um, the typical of you know, a person looking at you, you're going to see the lid wrapping over the top of the eye. If you see the top of the circle of the eye, then the person's going to look very startled and surprised as if their eyes were almost popping out of their head. So, uh, you know, what you can't see in this particular little, little spot is me looking at um, the image on my screen over and over again. Uh, every little step uh, is guided by the reference material. Uh, now, in this particular shot, you'll notice that uh, my hand is actually sitting on the white gessoed surface. So when I can, you, you know, I'll use a dry section. But if I'm, if I'm over some paint, it's wet, then I'll use the mall stick. Now here's a little blue um, shadow that's on the top of, of that sphere of the eye. And there's a, there's a better look at, at both eyes uh, drawing close to the finish. And speaking of finishing, we're just about there with 10 seconds left. So hope you've enjoyed uh, this, this demo of how to paint a portrait. Thank you very much.